Hello, welcome to this lesson in Calculus 1, Limits. What we're going to do in this batch of lessons is we're going to study the concept in calculus known as limit theory. And that is the first topic that you study when you take Calculus 1, whether you're in a high school class, whether you're in a college class, it doesn't matter, it's always the very first thing you learn. Now, uh, what I'm going to do in this batch of lessons is we're going to take every concept of limits that you learn and we're going to break it down and make it easy to understand. But the problem with limits is that when you read a book on calculus, and it's a problem because it's the very first thing you ever do in calculus, a lot of times the definitions and the theorems and the, just kind of the general concept of what a limit is, it gets very confusing quickly because they put a lot of definitions and theory way up front in the calculus book in that chapter. And so it's hard sometimes as a new student to cut through all of that stuff and just understand the general concept of what a limit is and to start to, to apply it. All right. The other problem, really, with calculus, uh, learning calculus, is that limits are very, very important for understanding the foundations of calculus. But once you can get past limits, you really don't use them very much, uh, unless you're a mathematician. So that's kind of the other problem with it. The very useful parts of calculus come a few chapters later, and that's the concept of a derivative and the concept of an integral. Those concepts are the fundamental foundation of calculus, and those are used in science and engineering, uh, and also in mathematics. The derivative, the concept of a derivative, which we'll learn much later, and the concept of the integral, and I already have courses that teach that stuff in detail. Uh, but before you can really get to truly understand the details of those concepts, you have to plow through limits, and that's the very first thing in a Calculus 1 course. So I'm going to try to slice through all of that stuff and give you uh, kind of my take on how to learn limit theory. Now it's not going to match your book exactly. Um, I'm going to try to present it in an easier to understand way, but just keep in mind that I'm going to tell you some things that your math teacher uh, might not totally agree with. That's because I'm, I'm trying to, to boil it down into something that's a lot easier to understand than most books. So um, without any more delay, let's just talk about the basic concept of what a limit is. I'm not going to draw any definition. You know, usually when you read calculus books, you, you hit a, a very uh, complicated looking definition early on. But I'm not going to start with a definition because I think it's easier to understand the general concept of what a limit is without getting into the messy definitions. And we can do that really easily with just a simple uh, graph. So here we have a graph here. So we have the x-axis and f of x up here. And so on the x, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll label it 1, 2, 3, 4. And on the y-axis, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. And I'm going to draw the simplest graph that I know how to draw on this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a point right here. I'm going to put a point right here. And I'm going to put a point uh, right up here. Okay. And so whenever I do that, I can connect through these dots. And there's you can kind of consider there be, to be a point here. So this forms a straight line. I know my line's not going to look perfect, but I'm going to do my best to draw a straight line. Forgive me if it's not perfect. But basically, it goes through these points. Okay. So this is a line. It's just like a line that you study in algebra, you know, a line that you learn about in geometry. It's a straight line. It has infinite number of points along that guy. And I can go and look at any point along x, and I can find the corresponding point along f of x. Or if you're thinking along algebra, you might see this labeled as y. But in calculus, we talk about f of x because this is a function of the variable x. Okay. So what would this particular uh, line look like? Well, it's actually going to be the following, f of x is equal to x plus 1. And you can see that because for every value of x you put in here, all you do is you add one more to it, and that's what f of x is. So when we put, for instance, the number 1 in, okay, let me uh, switch colors to make it a little easier to see so I don't clutter it up. We put the number 1 in for x, the corresponding number we get is 2 for f of x because we put the 1 in here, 1 plus 1 is 2, so that's the value of f of x. When we put the value of 2 in here, 2 plus 1 is 3, so that's the corresponding number here, and you can kind of see the pattern. That's why I tried my best to draw a straight line, but I know it's not perfect. 3, if you put it in here, 3 plus 1 is 4. And so it's a constant thing. There's no curviness or anything like that. Uh, and this is something you might recognize from algebra. Uh, this is the y-intercept over here. That's why it crosses at 1, and the number in front of the x is an implied 1 there. So the slope of this guy is 1, and it's just kind of a constant guy uh, laying on its side like that. But in calculus limit theory, we're not interested in just graphing things. We're interested in finding what we call the limit of the function. Okay? And the very simple concept of a limit, without getting into a bunch of definitions, can be very easily explained to you. Think about this for a second. As 
we look at the variable x, which is this variable here. As we approach the number one, and we use an arrow just to say that the variable x gets closer and closer to one, all right, then what happens to f of x? You can think of yourself here tracing your finger, and here, you know, if you're here, then the value of f of x is here. If you get a little bit closer, the value of f of x is here. If you get a little bit closer, the value of f of x is here. Well, if you get very, very close to the number one, what is the value of f of x? Well, we say as x approaches one, we say f of x approaches the number two, right? So this is basically, without getting a bunch of definition, this is the basic concept of a limit. You have a function, in this case we've chosen a simple function, and there's no curves, it's just a straight line. And what you do is you look and see how does the function behave as x approaches a some number. So because this is very simple, it's easy for you to trace your finger and say, okay, as this guy gets closer and closer and closer to one, then we actually approach two. But it's important in, limit, in limits, and I'll reinforce this a lot, when you're taking the limit of something, you don't ever actually get x equals 1, okay? And this is the thing that you kind of have to wrap your brain around. You're just getting really, really close to it. So you, you don't want to ever actually end up at the number 1, and uh, the reason why we'll explain later. You don't have to worry about why. It's because of what limits are used for later down the road, okay? But whenever you walk along here to see how this function behaves, you never, ever actually get to the number 1. You just get infinitely close to the number 1. And so as you do this, you can see you're going to walk along this line, and you're going to get infinitely close to this point here, which is the number 2. So we say, as x approaches 1, the function approaches 2. Right? Now you can do this for any point x. We can say as x approaches the number 2, we can say f of x, the function, approaches what? As we get closer and closer to 2, the function approaches 3. So again, we're never quite getting to 2. We just get infinitely close. And as we do that, the function gets infinitely close to 3. That's kind of why we use these arrows. Okay? In math, you're very used to seeing equal signs, right? Because something is equal. Well, in limits, we don't really use equal sign because we're not actually saying that as x equals 2, f of x equals this. We're saying that as x gets infinitely close to 2, the function gets infinitely close to 3. And for a straight line, I know you're like, well, who cares about that? That's very simple. But, you know, as you get more diff different kinds of functions, especially functions that jump around, then you don't ever want to quite get to that number. You just want to see how the function behaves as you get very close. So continuing on our merry way, we can take another example. As x approaches 3, um, actually, let's make it a little interesting. Instead of x approaches 3, what do you think is going to happen as x approaches negative 1? or negative 2. Let's, let's pick negative 2 just to make it even a little more interesting. Negative 2. Well, we don't have the graph this way because negative 2 would be on this side, but you can look from here. As x approaches negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is just going to give you negative 1. So as that happens, f of x would approach negative 1. But again, in terms of the limit, we don't ever quite get here, and the function just approaches this value, but never quite, get, quite gets there. Notice we just take the negative 2 and put it in there and add it. We get the negative 1. So this, uh, the way that I'm writing this is great to explain it, but that's not actually how you write a limit down in calculus. The way that you write it is the following. You write the word L-I-M, which just means limit, okay? And, you, and then if we're going to write the first one down, you'll say the limit as x approaches 1 of, you have to specify the function you're talking about. So in this case, we'll just say x plus 1 because this is f of x, right? We have to put the function down. We say that this is equal to 2. Um, if you can understand what I'm trying to imply when I write this down, then you're already 99% of the way to understanding limits. You know, we have some work to do and some theorems, of course, but you understand the basic idea. All it's saying is, here's a function, I've just graphed it on the board for you to show it graphically, but as x approaches the number 1, it never really quite gets to 1, but if it gets infinitely close to 1, then this function is going to approach 2. Notice that the answer you get is just by taking this guy, practically speaking, you take it and you plug it in and you add it and you get the number, all right? But there's some limitations to doing that we'll talk about later as well. What if you have, we want to write the second guy here, that would be the limit as x approaches 2, again, of the same function, x plus 1, is equal to, what did we get? We said the function uh, approached 3. Notice, again, it looks like we just take the 2 and we plug it in there. 2 plus 1 is 3, okay? And then finally, we can write our last guy here, and we can say the limit as x approaches negative 2, that's what we wrote down there, 
of the function f of x. So we just write x plus 1. This is the function we're talking about. And we said that that limit approached negative 1. Okay. Again, it's practically speaking, we plug it in there. Negative 2 plus 1 gives us negative 1. All right. So I know I'm giving you a little bit of inconsistency here because I'm telling you, hey, we don't ever quite get to negative 2, and the function, the limit doesn't ever quite get to negative 1, but it gets infinitely close. But then I turn around on the other hand and I tell you, oh, just to get the answer, you just plug it in here, and then you get it. So you're, you're probably saying, well, he's saying two different things. Well, the reality of it is when you define a limit mathematically, and we haven't written the definition down, but when we do, it's basically going to say that as the x approaches a number, infinitely close, the limit is the number that is approached, that the function approaches and gets infinitely close to. That's what the definition says. But practically speaking, almost all the time you can just take the number and plug it in there to get the limit, provided that the function that you're studying is smooth like this. And what I mean by smooth is notice there's no breaks. This function doesn't jump around. It doesn't have sharp corners. It isn't fragmented like some functions you might be able to draw. You might have a function that goes up like this and then it jumps straight down and continues on. Like it literally goes up and then jumps down and does has a discontinuous jump. This function here, you would have a very hard time finding a limit right around this point because the guy jumps around so much. This function, this tiny thing I'm drawing on the board, this one here, is not smooth. We also can use another word in, in calculus. We say it's not continuous at that point. And that makes sense, it doesn't, it jumps around, so it's not continuous, okay? But most functions that we study in science and engineering are very smooth like this. Even functions that have hills and valleys, this is still a smooth function. I mean, yeah, it has ups and downs, but it's still very smooth. So we can find limits like, like this for these functions that are smooth most of the time just by plugging numbers in. There's gonna be some exceptions, and I'm gonna show you as we go along, but most of the time we can do that. But when you have weird functions, functions that misbehave, functions that jump around, functions that have an infinity in there, right? I can, I can write functions down all day to show you functions where you'd run into problems, then you can't just plug in to find the limit. So the definition of the limit says you approach it infinitely close and see how the function behaves. So to give you a more of a concrete example of that, um, what if we wanted to study the function, what if we wanted to find the limit as x approaches 2 of the function x squared. And we want to figure out what that limit is. And just to remind you what this looks like, this is a parabola. I know you've studied this from algebra. Okay, so if this is x and this is f of x, this parabola is going to look something like this. It's not a perfect drawing, but it's going to look something like this. Right? So we're trying to see what happens as x approaches 2. So here's 1 and here's 2. Of course, here's negative 1, here's negative 2. We want to figure out what's happening as, it, as we walk along and get infinitely close to 2. So if you're not sure what to do, if you don't know if you can kind of plug in to find the value, if you don't know how the function behaves, maybe you don't even have this graph. See, I provided x squared for you because everyone knows what it looks like, but I could give you 20 functions that you wouldn't be able to visualize very easily without graphing it. So it, we're cheating a little bit by having this, but I'm trying to teach you the concept. If you don't know what to do to find the limit, then the way you handle it is you make a table. So you make a table of x values, and then you make a table and you write down what happens as we approach f of x is equal to x squared. And so we know that we're trying to approach x is equal to 2. We never quite get there though, we just get infinitely close. So what do you do? You start picking values in your calculator. We're going to pick x is equal to 1 because that's close to 2. What happens when we take and plug that into this function? 1 squared gives us 1. Okay. Now let's get a little bit closer to 2. What if we pick 1.5? If we square that function, we get 2.25. Okay. What happens if we get a little bit closer? 1.75, we square that, we will get 3.06. 1.95, again, we're just getting closer and closer to the value of 2, we get 3.80. What if we plug in and get 1.99? Then the value we get is 3.96, and then finally, we'll finally stop after this. 1.999, we're getting really close to the number 2, we get 3.996. Now from the behavior of the table, you can see exactly what the function is doing. As x approaches and gets infinitely close to the number 2, which we'll just kind of skip down in the table here, then the function gets infinitely close to the number what? To the number 4, right? So then because the table behaves this way and we can continue getting closer and closer and closer to 2, 
then the function will get closer and closer and closer to 4. Because of that, we can say that the limit as x approaches 2 of the function x squared is equal to 4. So the answer is just 4. That's what you would circle on your paper and say, hey, this function approaches the number 4 as this number approaches the number 2. So I guess the bottom line is if you have no idea how to solve and figure out what the limit is, if you don't know how to simplify it, we're going to get into lots of problems where I'll show you techniques. But if you don't know what to do, you can always make a table. Just make a table, get your calculator, and plug in values closer and closer and closer to the number and just see if the function starts to approach and get closer and closer to a number. Now, we can see in this case that it does. But it also, if you kind of think back to what I told you a minute ago, this function is, again, very smooth. There's no discontinuous jumps. It doesn't kind of suddenly jump from one level to another. It's very smooth. There's an infinite number of very smooth, continuous points along this function. And we will find out, as we go through and study the theorems, that whenever you're taking the limit of a function that's very smooth like that, which is a lot of very common functions, really what you end up doing practically is you take the number you're approaching and you stick it in and that's the value of the limit. You definitely can get into problems doing that with certain functions that we'll talk about later, but for the smooth and continuous ones like this, this is kind of how you handle it. So that's the first lesson here. Uh, we're evaluating simple limits with substitution. That's why I titled it this way. The concept of a limit basically is studying how the function behaves as x approaches but never quite gets to a number. And then the function, will we say that it approaches what we call a limit. Okay, And in general, if you want to write that down, what you're going to see in your book, in general, what you're going to see in your book is you're going to say, it, they'll say the limit as x approaches some number a of some function f of x equals l. Okay, equals l. And this is the limit of f of x as x approaches the number a. And then practically speaking, if smooth, and we'll define smooth later, if a smooth function, practically speaking, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is just taking the function and plugging in the value of a. Okay, this is what we've been doing this whole time. Over here, we just take the function and we plug in the value of 2 and we get it. This only works when you have smooth functions. If you don't have a smooth function, then you can't do that and you have to use other techniques, which you may make a table, you might graph it, you might do something, you might simplify it some other way. We'll get into the gotchas later. That's the fundamental concept of limits. If you understand what we've done in this lesson, which I don't think is hard conceptually, then you already have a general idea. What we need to do now is get some practice working problems, and then I'll introduce more definitions and more theorems, and I'll break it down into easy to understand uh, you know, chunks. So follow me on to the next lesson, we'll get some additional practice solving limits in calculus.